This is standard 8GA2. We're still in geometry. On this one, we're going to deal with proving that figures are congruent. First part says explain that a two-dimensional figure is congruent to another if one can be mapped onto the other by a sequence of rotations, reflections, and our translations. Let's remember our rotations, reflections, and our translations. What we're talking about here are our congruence transformations. If you use congruence transformations, uh, then what you're going to create will be two figures that are congruent. That means one can lie flat on top of the other. They have the exact same size and shape. They lie, the sides are the same, the angles are the same. Two, after we show how you can do that, then we're going to describe a sequence of rotations, reflections, and our translations, congruence transformations, that can exhibit congruence between two two-dimensional figures by mapping one onto the other. All we have to do to show that two figures are congruent is to map one onto the other using congruence transformations. Now, we've talked about congruence transformations. That's your translations, reflections, and rotations. These transformations generate congruent figures. Let's look down here. On this one, how can you show that object one and object two are congruent? Well, we talked about figures before. If I can place them on top of each other and they match exactly up, then they are congruent. So let's see what we could do. How could we move this one on top of that one? Hmm. What if we were to reflect this one? Because see how the top part of this one, the, the top part is the long part? Down here it's the bottom part. What if we reflect this one over the x-axis? So let's reflect it over the x-axis. Let's reflect object one over what? When you reflect, you have to tell what you're reflecting it over. Here is the x-axis, over the x-axis. Okay. If we do that, let's find each point here. This one is two from the axis. So it should be two from the axis there. This one's two above the axis, two below the axis. Okay, this point here is one, two, three, four above it. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four below it. This is one, two, three, four above. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four below. This point is one, two, three, four above. One, two, three, four below. This point is one, two, three, four, five above. So it would be one, two, three, four, five below. And I think I left this point out. One, two, three, four, five above. One, two, three, four, five below. All right. And then this point. One, two, three, four above. One, two, three, four below. Now let's draw what we've got. Okay, sketch what we've got. got. Not drawing, we're actually just sketching. Okay, now we've done that. We've reflected that figure, that object one over the x-axis. Now what are we going to do to get it over here? Hmm. Pick a point. We know this is the, the corner here. These are in the same direction. All I need to do is translate this one, right? But I need this point to be here. So let's count to see how far I've got to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so let's translate the figure. Fourteen units, which way are we translating it? Fourteen units left. Okay, so if we translate this 14 units left, if you translate each point 14 units left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, oops, should I do 13 or 14, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 units, not 14 units, translate that figure 13 units left, okay, that would put that there. Let's translate this one 13 units. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And see how each point's lining up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See, each point's going to line up. And if you do each one of them, you're going to wind up putting this flat on top of it. I've shown that these two are, the, are congruent. How? Simply by, by reflecting it over the x-axis and then translating it 13 units left. And in doing that, I have managed to put this unit, this object one, on top of object, object two. I've mapped it on top of it. That's how I've proven that the two are congruent. Now, the second part to it, of this, let's describe a sequence of transformations that can be used to show that rectangle A, B, C, D, this rectangle, the rectangle A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime are congruent. How can I prove that these two are congruent? Okay. Let's notice A is on the top here and A is on the top there, but notice how our Ds are in different places, right? Okay, there's a couple of ways I could go by, uh, I could do this. What if I reflect this over the y-axis, okay? A is one point from it, so I could move it to there. There's my A, okay? My D is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six on the other side. The B is on one on this side, so it'd be there. The C is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And here we are. Okay. Now, notice, our, here's our A, here's our D. If we can just translate it down, I can put the A and D on top of each other, the C prime and B prime on top of each other. So, so the first thing that I did was I reflected, and we have to say what we reflected. We reflected rectangle A, B, C, D. And what did we reflect it over? Over the... Y axis, right? Then what did we do? We translated it down, okay? Then we translated it Let's see how far to get the D on top of the D prime. Let's move this whole thing down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See that we put the D on D prime on top there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's your C prime that I just moved. Let's go to the A prime. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then let's do the B prime. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they're all right there on top of each other. I've managed to move this, give you the directions on how to move it. I told you first to reflect it over the y-axis and then to translate it down. How many did we translate it? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Translate it down. Translated it down seven. Let's count and make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay, so we have proven that these two are congruent by providing a list of congruence transformations, a reflection and a translation. You can also use a rotation. All three of those are congruence transformations. If I use a combination of reflections, rotations, and translations to map one figure onto the other, then I can prove that the two figures are congruent.